Good morning, YouTube, um, YTPC. It's Scott, the front porch piper here, um, coming to you on a gorgeous Friday afternoon, um, Friday morning, actually, still. Um, in Southern Maine, we have a uh, computer app, weather app tells me it's 70 degrees outside, uh, really low humidity, a nice gentle breeze wafting the leaves in the, in the trees. Um, just, this is why we live in Maine in August, right? Um, <laughs> we'll have a different story to tell in, in January, February, and March. Um, anyway, uh, in terms of uh, the administrivia stuff to get uh, by, um, I'm not smoking anything right now, as you can see. Um, that's because I'm in my uh, home office, and I don't smoke inside. We're right off the front porch, and we'll be going out there in a bit to uh, to uh, fire up and, and talk as well. Um, this is an, a bit of an unusual video um, for me. Um, it's kind of a double header, um, two part, two kind of different subjects that we're going to cover in one video. Um, and uh, so, item one is uh, called Everyday Carry or EDC. Um, I was recently catching up on some uh, YTPC videos. Excuse me, I'm going to get a glass of water. <clears throat> and came across a few that talked about um, EDC, or everyday carry. Um, what folks have in their wallets or on their person, in their pockets, um, that they need on a daily basis. Um, the items that we can't live without or that we can't get through um, a, a productive day without. And these items ranged from, you know, pipes, obviously, tobacco, uh, and irrelevant accessories, to other gadgets like um, uh, tools, various tools, multi-tool, uh, Swiss Army knives and, and other pocket knives, um, flashlights, um, and some even had, um, as part of their everyday carry firearms, a sidearm. So I thought I'd go through what my everyday carry, my EDC, consists of. Um, <clears throat> typically, um, every day on my person, I have the following. My wallet, typical you know, driver's license, a couple of credit cards, membership card, uh, healthcare card, business cards, all in there. Got a whole lot of money. Um, so that's that's uh, that's an essential, right? You don't leave your house without that. Um, my iPhone, which is recording this, um, a pen, a fountain pen that um, I've come to love. Fountain pens. I, I have two, um, and they are the what I use to to write with these days. And I write with them in this little small notebook um, that I use. If it's in my pocket, my jacket pocket. Um, I use to take jot down notes from meetings um, or just things I need to recall later in the day. Um, I don't know if you can see this on that. I have a little saying to remind me, who can I serve today? And that's a, an important thing for me to just remember that to be of service to people I run into. Um, and keys. Um, I have car keys. I have a house key. I keys to my office in downtown, and I have a bunch of these little tags that, uh, that when I remember to use them, give me a discount at uh, a grocery store um, and other places in my library card, local library card. So <clears throat> that's what I have in my pocket or on my person every day. Depending on the day and depending on where I'm going to be, um, I may also have the following. Um, my laptop, um, which is a MacBook Air, uh, kind of a vintage MacBook Air at this point, circa 2013. Um, a case in which to store the laptop. Uh, I have a um, larger notebook um, for which I keep uh, client notes when I meet with clients. The client meeting notes go in there. I have a water bottle, um, and uh, depending on the time of day, I will have a uh, 
thermal coffee mug. So I'm going into my office in Portland in the morning, I'm, you know, taking carding a cup of co uh, cup of coffee in that thermal mug. Um, and I have a backpack to carry all this stuff in. This is basically my mobile office. <clears throat> and within that backpack, um, I will have power cords uh, for the iPhone and the laptop. Um, I'll have markers and, and pens and refills for the, the fountain pen, um, highlighters. Um, I'll have some printing, printed reading material, um, articles that um, I have printed out. Um, workbooks that I've drafted if I'm doing a workshop. I often have uh, workbooks uh, for the participants to complete for that. Um, my trusty Kindle. Um, I love reading off of this thing. I know there are people out there who are classic. I need a book. I need to be able to pages. You know, I, I'm not that way anymore. Used to be, um, but I just love this Kindle Fire. Um, it has consolidated my library tremendously, um, and and I love it. Um, also, in the backpack, I'll have a, <laughs> a minor pharmacy. Um, I'll carry Benadryl. I have an allergy to nuts, uh, and occasionally I'll have a snack that someone will provide that unbeknownst to me um, has nuts in it, and I'll eat it, and Benadryl's a good thing. I'll eat a bite of it, I can tell right away, um, especially if it's walnuts. Um, and so Benadryl is a good thing to have. Um, I have some uh, ibuprofen for those days we all have. Um, there's, I think, some Band-Aids in there and a comb and some um, hand wash, uh, sanitizer things. Um, I think that's probably it. There's often a, a pipe or two, depending on how long I'm going to be uh, gone for the day. Um, uh, or in a tin of tobacco. A check tool, clearly. And if I'm not flying, if I'm traveling by car or uh, bus, um, depending on where I'm going, um, you know, I'll throw in a lighter, but if I'm flying, I wait till I get to my destination to, to buy, you know, a, a bit beck to light up the pipe. I mean, you just, yeah, you know, what can you take uh, that's caught, that starts, that sparks a fire on an airplane anymore? Not much, and I just don't want, I've had enough Zippos and pipe lighters confiscated um, that were in the bottom of my backpack and I forgot about it, but I just don't even keep them in there anymore. And then finally, um, some rain gear. I'll have uh, a slicker um, and I fold up and can put it in the backpack and then uh, quite often a pair of uh, rain pants. Um, I used to live <clears throat> in Portland and could walk to my office and occasionally there'd be a, a rainy day or a stormy day and uh, um, you know those rain pants between the rain pants and the slicker kept me pretty dry uh, by the time I got to the office I wasn't completely drenched um, so that's basically my my everyday carry my EDC um, nothing fancy pretty utilitarian um, what's in your pocket let me know in the in the comments below I would uh, love to hear and then we'll pause and uh, we'll get out for the second game of our doubleheader out on the front porch. Well, I'll uh, pick a pipe and some tobacco to, uh, to spark up and we'll talk again. Okay, we are back for our second uh, installment here uh, of the doubleheader. And I uh, want to kind of pre-warn you, uh, we have some construction going on in the neighborhood. Lots of construction noises like saws and hammers and stuff. Uh, they're building some homes nearby, so there may be some distraction there. Um, but we'll get through it. We'll get through it. A um, couple things. Uh, smoking. One of my favorite pipes. This is uh, a Danish estate. No name. See that? Um, uh, one of the, actually, I think it was the first estate that I ever had, ever bought. And um, we're also in the flight path, I guess, today. Um, 
but it's a great smoker. It's um, I just I love the shape. I love the feel in my hand. There's a bit of rustication to it. And I just I really it's a great pipe. Okay. So the second section of the video um, is called uh, Small Acts of Defiance. I, I love that term. Um, I came across an article on uh, medium.com, and I'll put a link down in the, uh, in the bucket for you. Um, it was written by a guy named Shaul Stone, and it was entitled Why I Smoke a Pipe and Other Acts, um, and Other Small Acts of Defiance. Um, as I said, I, I love that phrase, uh, small acts of defiance. So Stone is a writer and a, and a pipe smoker, and he's actually the founder of um, the Brooklyn Pipe Society. And he notes that pipe smokers, as pipe smokers, we engage in small acts of defiance. That, that pipe smoking is an opportunity to turn away from the devices, the apps, the algorithms that compete for our attention on a regular basis in today's society. You know, it's a mechanism for slowing down um, and being more deliberate in our thoughts and actions. And fire up here. And this is pretty much at odds with contemporary lifestyles that reward the speed, the short term, and the multitasker. Um, he writes that the pipe is a frustrating, a fussy and frustrating thing. It's a perpetual learning process toward an ideal experience that can never be achieved. Kind of like trying to do a video out here on the front porch with uh, with quiet. You know, it's an ideal experience that'll never be achieved. So he writes that the um, I already said that. Um, sorry. So pipe smokers, as pipe smokers, we engage in small acts of defiance, in part because we reject easier fixes, cigarettes, vapes even cigars, to satisfy our tobacco desires. And the fact that we smoke at all in an age of vehement anti-tobacco sentiment is an act of defiance. Stone notes that um, yeah, pipe smoking is about freedom and choice. And then when we smoke our pipes, it's actually an act of protest against the world closing in on us, uh, closing in on our freedoms. Um, we live our lives in a small but open rebellion. Um, and so I'd venture to say that our rebellion, our, our small acts of defiance may spill over into other aspects of our lives. We may adhere to strong values that guide our way in the world. Uh, during a time of uh, seeming values drift, I've begun to see a lot of videos on the YPTC about uh, you know, not explicitly values drift, but kind of. Um, so where values may shift depending on our situation, right? Um, on the other hand, small act of defiance may manifest as consideration. And, and not consideration in terms of kindness. You know, not that, that pipe smokers are are 
kind people. I mean, not that we're not, but um, but we're considerate, and that means that we consider other points of view. You know, kind of a play on the F. Scott Fitzgerald uh, quote about the test of a first-rate intelligence uh, is the ability to hold two opposing ideas in mind at the same time um, and still retain the uh, ability to function. Um, I've noticed that many pipe smokers can, despite strong values, consider the opposing views of others. without getting tied up in knots. While we may not necessarily agree with the values and opinions of our fellow pipe smokers, we can, um, you know, socially, sociably connect and interact with them. Um, and. Um, With, with respect, I think. So I've not encountered a lot of pipe smokers. Um, excuse me, I've not encountered a lot of non-pipe smokers who can claim that. And all you have to do is, is look on social media, like Facebook. And people, you know, saying, if you don't believe in my point of view, just unfriend me now. Um, you know, I know on the YTPC, I know on Facebook groups that I belong to, there are many different views of the world. Um, and we all seem to be able to acknowledge that in each other and to be able to get along. There's a favorite quote of mine from Mark Twain. Um, it goes, it ain't what you don't know that gets you in trouble. It's what you know for sure that just ain't so. With so many sources of information and so many that have come into, that are now skeptical sources of information, It's what we know for sure that often gets us in trouble, um, that often gets disproved, that gets upended. Um, and again, as pipe smokers, and, and it's not universal, this is a, you know, I understand it's a generalization, but that consideration of others' opposing thoughts and view, values. Um, can be considered a small act of defiance. The fact that we will consider those uh, those um, thoughts, those values being being aired, you know, and it opens the door to discourse and engagement, um, which is in and of itself a small act of defiance these days. So what do you think? Um, you engage in small acts of defiance? You engage in large acts of defiance? You know, are your acts of defiance uh, a reflection of your pipe smoking? Or the cause of it? You know, do you smoke a pipe because you're defiant? Or are you defiant because you smoke a pipe? <laughs> um, and does it really matter one way or the other? You know, let me know your thoughts on this. I'd be, I'd be curious. I thought it was a fascinating article. Like I said, I'll put a link down below. Um, take a look at it. And uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Um, as always, I um, appreciate uh, a like, a share, uh, even a subscription. And I uh, look forward to uh, seeing you down the road. Cheers.